She never lived alone. My mother-in-law, Anna, was married over 60 years when my father-in-law died. Until that moment, she never lived alone. She grew up in her parents' home in Hungary. When she was 19 years old, she married my father-in-law, escaped from Hungary to flee the uprising in 1956, and eventually created her own family in the United States. So now, she was living alone for the first time in her life. When the house behind me went up for sale just a short time after my father-in-law died, my husband and I knew it would be the perfect place for her to live. So Anna bought the house directly behind us and we got to work making a new home. Once the interior of the house was set, it was time to focus on the garden. And Tom and I had a great idea. Why not create a gate to connect the two backyards of the houses? And believe me, never underestimate the power of an open door. Creating an entryway between the two properties made it actually feel like we were physically closer. And that was the whole point. The first thing we did was to replace the broken down fence along the property line. Tom designed a horizontal fence constructed of standard two by four and two by six lumber. And there is one reason I think horizontal fencing is much better than vertical fencing. One of the drawbacks of wood fencing is that it will rot when it comes in contact with the soil. But the brilliant feature of a horizontal design constructed of standard lumber is its ease of maintenance. So instead of replacing complete sections of a fence, if something gets rotted, you just need to replace the bottom two by four. So easy. The next step in our project was to repair the existing garden border. It's hard to tell from this photo, but the previous owner had some great plants in the garden. The garden just became a bit overgrown because the owners had rented out the property. So to clean up the garden border, I just set up some string lines, I removed the turf that was growing into the garden, and I saved all the plants that we could reuse. There were actually quite a few plants that we were able to reuse. We reused a peony, they had some great yucca plants, and there were tons of bleeding hearts. I did a soil test so that I would know how to amend the soil, and we ordered over 10 yards of compost. We used the compost to amend the garden soil, and we also used it to top seed so that I could repair the existing lawn. The next thing that I wanted to do is we needed to fill out the rest of the garden with plants. There is a lot of deer in the area, especially the area along Anna's garden. Deer tend to be creatures of habit, and there's a small herd of deer that walk along the entire length of her garden border every morning. Some of the plants that I picked that were the best as far as deer resistance were Nepeta, Millennium Allium, and also Purple Sage. And just little by little, I kept adding some more plants, and when I divided plants up in my own garden, I would often just place them into Anna's garden as well. Once the perennial border was looking a bit neater, Tom and I decided to lay a garden path along the back of our garden leading into Anna's garden. That would make it easier for her to come and go and spend time on our patio. I have to say that although the garden path was originally added for a matter of convenience, it has actually become my favorite feature in my garden. Tom and I installed the garden paths ourselves. We ordered patio blocks and leveling sand from a local landscape company and had everything delivered right to our driveway. Laying the path was actually pretty straightforward. The first thing that we did was we removed the sod and then we dug three to four inches below the soil so that we would have a place to put the leveling sand. We laid out the leveling sand and we pounded it flat so that we could place the patio blocks on top of that. Tom made up a makeshift level and a pounder using some scrap wood, and it worked like a charm. And you know what? That path did exactly what it was meant to do. The path became a reminder that Tom and I were right there, just a short walk away. We kept the path shoveled during the winter time, and we decorated during the holidays, and we kept the gate open when the deer weren't around. Sadly, my mother-in-law passed away this past September 24th, 2022. 
We sold the house to wonderful new neighbors, and the gate's now secure. But every time I look at that path and walk on it, I feel like Anna's just a short walk away. And what I learned from this is to never underestimate the power of an open door, or in this case, an open gate. That garden gate and that garden path really helped us feel closer. And once again, proving that a garden is more than just a bunch of pretty flowers. So that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching, friends, and I'll see you in the next one.